I felt a hot shudder run down my spine at how quickly everything is moving in this plot. The voice from my dreams echoed through the air into my ears. I looked around panicked alongside the incubi. James placed a hand on my shoulder trying to remain calm. Don't worry. No one will hurt you. Are you sure? Are you really sure? All of us shut our heads towards the doors, finally putting down the direction of the voice. The doors quickly swung open, revealing a sight I would have never expected to see. Um... Skin red as blood. Eyes black and gold piercing into mine. Roughened up clothes and a pistol in his hands. I saw a monster, a blood orange monster! Oh, I covered my mouth not to scream at the sight. Dried blood covered the bandana around his neck as he- Please, at Oh my god! As he smirked at me and the boy around me- Remember, she was me. like, there's something weird about her! Besides the red-skinned man was similar-looking woman in matching thug-like clothes. Aw, oh, what's the matter, boys? You really didn't think I wouldn't find you, did you? I hoped you would, you piece of- All of a sudden, the man raised his gun at Sam's face and instantly pulled the trigger. Oh my god. Oh god. We- all gasped in shock, instinctively expecting to see a bullet run through Sam's face, but... What? What the fuck? Wh what? What should have ended with a hand shot, ended with a loud but empty blank shot. <laughs> the pistol echoed its empty shots as the man grew more and more pissed, pulling the trigger over and over in aggravation. Dumbass. Luckily for my ears, it became quieter after its first shot. Why the fuck won't you work? This place is protected. Oh shit. Ooh. What did you say, shrimp? This place has a seal, protecting it from hellborn magic. Then how are you here? What the fuck is that supposed to mean? The man growled and threw his gun at Sam, who was able to dodge it in time. The pistol bounced off the ground a couple times before sliding further away, hitting the wall in a final stop. As it stopped moving, the gun faded into black flame that disappeared into the air. The previous owner had this place protected by magic, Malix. Malix? That was his name. His existence resonated in my memory from the dream I had. However, I looked to Matthew in the same confusion as Malix did, so they came here on purpose. They knew. How? I guess so. They must have known, though. This place is protected by magic? <laughs> it would, it would seem that your grandfather had some sort of protective barrier around this house. From the looks of it, it only disables Hellborn. Malk's face grew to that of extreme anger, his fist tightening as if he was crushing a stress ball. Then what's stopping me from dragging your asses out and shooting you then? Out of pure instinct, I stepped forward and placed myself between Malix and the boys. With no power, Malix wasn't going to fight. I took that chance to stand up to him instead of being powerless like I was in the dream. Probably not a good decision. Leave him alone, get out of my house, fuck off. Fuck off! Malix suddenly laughed wildly, staring at me in disbelief. <laughs> whoa, whoa! Who had the bitch out of her cage? What is this? A reverse harem or something? <laughs> you have problems, dude. Malx grinned at me evilly. Run what duck I can. Duck. I ducked underneath Malx's oncoming hand. I stared at his hand at his black flame tattoo in surprise. And I took several steps back from Malx. Matthew and Damien stepped in front of me, guarding me from Malx with their arms. <laughs> A quick one. I'm liking you more and more. Back off, Malx! Don't start acting tough, you pathetic excuse of a demon! You need more protection than her. Shut up! Oh, did I make the little Matthew cry? Why don't you just grow a pair? Enough, Malix! The woman, who had been standing in silence the whole time, planted a firm hand on Malix's shoulder. Malix looked back at her with a growl and a glare that could kill. Since when did you get the guts to speak out of place? We both know you never controlled me. What I want the fuck them dead just like you do. But now's not the time. Fuck off. I know what I'm doing. 
do you? Even if you did fight them, there's five against two. We never win. Shut up! Let's go, Melex! We're wasting our time! The two growled at each other. If they could have used their magic, I could sense that fire would glow from under their teeth. Malex grunted and glared at the boys. He pointed at James, wanting so badly to use his fingers like a knife. <laughs> Just wait, pretty boys. We'll get you and fuck you up real good. <laughs> okay, whatever. Then Malex turned to me, moving his finger to point directly between my eyes. And don't think you're safe. <laughs> Step outside. I dare you. <laughs> you have problems, man. So what, am I just supposed to skip school forever now? Cool. With that, Malix and the woman walked out of the mansion. The doors closed behind them, leaving the boys and I alone once again. Why didn't we just tackle them and kill them right there, I wonder? I felt my knees give out from under me, forcing the boys to quickly turn to catch me. Whoa, whoa! Are you alright? Why was he here? He's been closely tracking us. Our blood trail from the forest must have led him here. Great. Wonderful. <sighs> we should have stopped him and finished it here. Agreed. For once, Matthew, I agree with you. I stood up and rubbed my arms, feeling the goosebumps Malik's left behind on me. I couldn't stop myself from shivering in fear of his words. Alex, was he a demon? That son of a bitch is not a demon. He's a devil. Mm -hmm. A devil? There's a difference? Yes. Demons come from a different plane of existence called the Abyssal Plains. Devils, however, come from one of the seven circles of a place humans know. It's hell. Despite us not being human, we are very different creatures. We actually have brains, for one. Devils always like to cause trouble and try to kill or torture others for their own enjoyment. Demons, like us, know when to use our powers and when not to. We're not stupid. I would have appreciated it if you'd known not to kiss me right off the bat. Devils follow orders from higher-ups in their order and their power only comes from their connection to hell. Demons all have free wills and don't rely on where they came from to use their powers. This was all so confusing, I agree. Demons and devils and magic all existed and I happened to land in the middle of it. What do we do? You're safe. You've been protected as well. What? What Damien's saying is that the magic that protects this place also protects you. Your grandfather must have cast it when you last saw him, or something of that nature. We can sense its aura around your body. I couldn't believe my ears. It was the third day of surprises, and this one took the cake in being the most surprising. I felt my head spin once again. What did I get myself into? Miss, please don't worry. We'll find a way to train ourselves and become stronger to finally finish this feud. <laughs> I'm gonna kick his ass right now! Until then, we'll protect you as much as we can. If Malix comes back, we'll be here for you. But what about going outside? Won't he... Like we said, you have a protection spell on you. Even if Malix attacks you, he won't be able to use his magic on you. He'd be just like any other human you can fight back against. And we know Taekwondo. Didn't you say you knew Taekwondo? Ah. Well, yeah. I felt somewhat relieved that I was mostly safe from Malix. Still, I could not help but feel very nervous and apprehensive about the future. The boys were safe here to train and become stronger, but what if Malix did the same? Even more so, I was lost about how my grandfather knew about magic. I had to find out. At least I had time. I went to bed that night feeling nervous. Despite the words of the incubi, I felt like a target to something I'd never been able to explain or prove. Magic? Devils? Demons? How did this even all happen? Should I really meddle with the situation? They're only
only staying until after they defeat Malix. That's right. They said they'd only stay until after they defeated Malix. And after that, my life could go back to normal. Temporary insanity, as Kay would say. Kay? I don't know who Kay is. The question was, then, would I want them to leave? If my life went back to normal, then I'd have to care for the house all on my own. I'd get to focus on my life instead of being distracted by the boys. I'd have to. My life. Where was my life going anyway? I was under pressure from my parents with my only friends and the boys to comfort me. Without the boys, I'd have no way to hide from my responsibilities. Enough. Let's just sleep and deal with tomorrow when it comes. Defeating my sense of thought, I forced myself to sleep. Unsure of what tomorrow had planned for me, hopefully whatever the future had for me, I would be ready for it. I promise to be with you forever. Who? What? You're so important to me. What? That, that I swear I'll give my life to you. What? Please, let me love you. What is going on? These, this is everyone. I'll be by your side, always. I can't imagine living without you. I want to be with you. I love you. That was everyone we can go for? Oh my god, we can go for our friends? Maybe? I slowly opened my eyes, letting the voices of my dream echo in my head and force me awake. I rubbed my eyes before sitting up and looking at my clock. 7 a.m. Why am I up so early? I fell back onto the bed and closed my eyes, trying to go back to sleep. However, something kept me awake. Why? It's too early to even be alive. I gave up and sat up, staring at the fireplace across from my bed. A sigh escaped from between my lips before I threw my legs over the left side of the bed. What to do at 7 a.m. in the morning? Who knows? Spoil the house, make some coffee, work on homework. Oh, uh, what's more likely to get- can we save? I don't know what's gonna take us to Damien. I don't know if any of them will take us to Damien. Uh, explore the house? I decided it was a good idea to wander on the house. I never really explored it much as a child. There were bound to be new surprises. Gesundheit. <laughs> well, come on, feet. Let's go on an adventure. I stood and exited my room, hoping that the boys were still asleep. I began to wander the halls on the end of my house, opening each door to find what each room led to. Quickly, I found an old office. A desk and chair sat by the far side as a large bookshelf of documents and memorabilia donned its nooks and crannies. There were a couple pictures of me growing up peeking from the shelf as I walked further into the room. I don't believe I've been in here before. Oh, maybe we can find some info on magic. I tried to recall memories of ever seeing this room, coming up with nothing as a result. This room was new to me. Did I want to disturb the furniture? I'm curious. I gently opened the shelves and any drawers I saw in the room, and a couple of them were books and even sewing kits. I assumed they were used for my grandfather's toys, so I left them alone. One drawer, however, was locked, no matter how many times I pulled. Ah! Come on! Open! Nothing. It would not budge. The drawer beside it, though, did, revealing a laptop. Why is there a laptop in the drawer? Oh boy, we're gonna find some shit. I lifted it from the drawer and carried it over to the desk and chair, opening it. It was a high-tech laptop with a retina scanner as a pass lock. What? I was not sure whether or not to try to unlock it or not. Yes? Yeah, duh. I decided to try. I turned on the computer and leaned my face near the retina scanner, lining the camera up with my eye. To my surprise, I knew it. I heard a ping come really? from the computer before. He left it for her, I'm sure. Huh, look at that. On the desktop were documents and folders labeled with different aspects of the Anderson Company. Taxes, profits, biological products, the list went on. If I really did want to become the CEO, I had everything at my fingertips. Dad would be impressed. Oh, because you. Dad would sure be impressed. One icon, however, stood out from the rest. Borago? I double clicked the icon, but no window came up. Instead, I heard a large click come from the drawer that was locked! What the? I slowly left my seat and walked over to the drawer, attempting to open it again. It slid open smoothly in the direction of my pulling hand, revealing two books. One was a plain black, black journal with a tie to keep it closed. The other was bound in leather with cryptic symbols all over the cover. 
And I took out the journal and skimmed through it. <laughs> See? Whoa! <laughs> Seeing my grandfather's notes, they were all detailed explanations and opinions on his findings on demon magic. Is this whole thing his fault? Like, demons existing in this world, it's all his fault? It could be. Did he summon things? No, that's probably how he died! <gasps> oh no! <laughs> he really did know about magic! Oh no, this music. I sat down at the desk and read through the journal further, finding drawings and sketches of symbols and magic circles, each with their own different meanings and effects. It was all fascinating. There was even a page of important spells to know. I read through them, trying to memorize them into my mind. I don't know what came over me, but I started to feel more energetic and more powerful simply reading my grandfather's notes. I was suddenly aware of the energy that surrounded my body and the power that was suddenly in the house. Around the house. Around the house. The more I read, the more powerful I became. I don't know if it works like that. However, the music cut off suddenly as my mind suddenly froze and I found myself walking back to the drawer, putting the back book back and closing the drawer. The lock reset and I snapped out of it. Huh? What? I shook my head and looked at the drawer, realizing what I had done. I walked over to the- Someone's controlling me. I walked over to the desk to reopen the lock, but suddenly felt the need to stop. Something held me back and didn't want me to pry any more than I already had. I was curious beyond belief, but I obeyed my thoughts for now. Eventually I would come back and look into it. I returned to bed, feeling the weight of this morning drag at me under my covers. And trying to sleep, I didn't, whatever. I had energy, but I wanted more sleep. It was Sunday and nothing was happening today. Come on, eyes, back to sleep. I shut my eyes and tried to slow my breathing. I looked at my phone to check the time once again. It was noon, yet it felt like I had slept for much longer. Why is time going so slowly? I sighed, got changed in normal clothes, and went out to the main hall and sat on the stairs. Sundays were very boring. However, the muffled sounds of battle caught my attention. Huh? I quickly went out to the backyard in response to the noise I had heard. Ooh, sparring. In the yard, all five of the boys practicing fighting. Sam was in the middle of the other four, surrounding him and throwing punches and kicks at him. <laughs> Sam, being the strongest of the bunch, blocked and dodged each almost masterfully. Almost. Don't disturb them or hey. Uh, do we want to watch them or do we want them to be aware of our presence? What do you want? I want to watch them. Don't disturb them? Yeah. I just watched. The boys were very much in their own world, focusing on the training they were all in. It was better not to disturb them. I checked the time and decided to head inside to the kitchen. I was getting hungry and I'm sure the boys would need to eat soon, so lunch was a must. Oh... Might as well make lunch today. It's been a while since I cooked. Did I just, like, deprive us of a speaking opportunity? I don't know. Ugh. I mean, you didn't say anything. Oh, well, whatever. We did too much to go back. Lunch wasn't particularly hard. I decided to make... Oh, God, what is his favorite food? I don't know what his favorite food is. Boop. All right. Got to keep... keep their energy and strength up with protein. Took my time to make almost perfect chicken breasts alongside some rice. Cooking wasn't hard unless you didn't know what you were doing in the first place. I placed the food in the dining room. However, none of the boys were there by the time I brought the final dish out. I carried that dish to the main lobby, catching the boys separating into different rooms in the house. Bitch, I made food! Part of me wanted to go to one in particular. The other part of me wanted to just leave them be and take the food in my hand to my room and eat. Maybe I could go out today while the boys focus on training. Uh, we're gonna go... We're gonna find one of them. Yep. I quickly rushed back and grabbed a second food dish before hunting down one of the boys. I looked down each hall, trying to find each of them wandering so I wouldn't have to go through each individual room finding them. I pursed my lips in irritation. Where the heck are they? I sighed, knowing that I would have to search for them in each room. Oh boy. I quickly turned and headed up the stairs. I began to walk down a hall and opened a random door, peeking inside. Lucky enough, I found Damien in the study. Damien was in Grandfather's study, which I had explored not long ago. Despite only being here for a short while, Damien looked like he knew this room like the back of his hand. What do Dude, you know? Dude, don't go snooping through my shit. What do you know, Damien? Damien was gazing at the pictures and books on the shelves, almost looking lost and dazed. Oh, he's looking at our baby photos. Oh. 
Damien? Huh? Oh, hello. Damien turned to me and gave a gentle smile, as if he was doing nothing as I came in. I entered the room and closed the door behind me. I was just looking at the books. <laughs> They're very interesting topics. Uh-huh. Huh? I looked over at the shelf and skimmed over the spine to each book. They were all books about business and psychology, all ranging in thickness. Some crossed over and brought the two topics together, while others were strictly one or the other. Did my grandfather read and study all these? They seemed used, but they were covered by a small layer of dust. Well, he is old. Do humans really study this much? Not normally. Over a lifetime, yes. Occasionally, it depends on why we're studying. What do you mean? Well, if we're interested in a topic like business, we learn what we can because we want to know more. Are there things you can't study? No, there are books and stuff about anything and everything. Even the demon world? Uh, maybe, but usually those books are considered fiction or religious theory. It was almost cute to talk about learning with Damien. I guess learning was different in the demon world, but telling him about learning was almost like telling a child the meaning of life. I felt my son become a little wiser as we began talking. Continue Humans talking. can learn anything? At any time? Uh-huh. We have libraries and bookstores and the internet! Humans have the freedom to learn anything. Oh, he's sad. Oh, no. I looked at Damien in confusion. He seemed to look jealous. Why? What can't you do? What about demons? Can't they learn what they want? Damien shook his head before looking down at his feet. Demons don't have schools to learn from like humans do. <laughs> Everything we learn comes from experience or verbal mentoring. Books are only permitted to be read by higher nobles. Are you illiterate? <gasps> I stared wide-eyed. There were no schools in the abyssal plains? That seemed so unreal, yet in a way I wasn't that surprised. The only ones who have ever touched a book are James and Eric, since they're the oldest. Sam and Matthew chose not to read. <laughs> He's right. got middle child syndrome. Also, I didn't believe they were all literal brothers. They are. But apparently they are. I believed it. What about you? Damien stood silent for a bit before sitting on the ground, leaning against the large desk in the room. I decided to follow along and sat beside him. You brought food? Huh? Oh, yeah, I brought food here. Thank you. Damien took his dish of food and began to politely eat. I followed suit. It was painfully obvious that he was dodging my question. Did I want to know? I was very curious. Aha! I was curious, so I had to ask. However, Damien looked at me, stopping me from opening my mouth. Come because on. Because I'm technically not a noble at all. <gasps> Is he a <gasps> bastard? I tilted my head and raised an eyebrow in confusion. Not a noble? But aren't you all brothers? If the others are nobles, that would make you one. He's a top door bastard. Damien looked at his dish with a sigh. I suddenly felt regret for asking and pushing the topic. Before I could apologize, Damien spoke. We are all half-brothers. We oh. only share the same father. That's Our mothers they all look different. are all different. James, Eric, Sam, and Matthew all had noble mothers who are now queens. My mother was not a noble, and is not a queen. I could see sadness in Damien's eyes. I bit my lip. I shouldn't have pushed the issue. So that's why he defers to them all the time. Oh my god! I'm sorry. Damien shook his head, snapping out of his thoughts, and smiled at me. For what? You didn't know, and were curious. It was only appropriate to answer. Still, it was rude of me to pry like that. I'm sorry. I didn't know what to say. Damien only smiled lightly at me before continuing to eat. As he ate, my mind began to wander to the Abyssal Plains. What was it like? What did it look like? Was their castle big? How many servants did they have? My thoughts were halted by Damien chuckling, most likely at my thoughts. I turned red in embarrassment. Sorry. You keep saying sorry when you don't need to. It's kind of cute. <laughs> I pursed my lips but couldn't stop a blush from running across my face. This was going nowhere. I went back to eating in futility, earning another chuckle from Damien. However, Oh, it's a groan of pain escaped Damien's lips. I stopped and looked at him in surprise. I'm surprised, too. 
Damien, are you okay? I yeah. <clears throat> it's nothing. Oh my god. Don't worry about it. Is he allergic to the food we gave him? Oh, did we fuck up? I heard him gulp down and hide another groan, making me even more concerned than before. Damien! <clears throat> it's it's just a headache. Oh. I get it when I run out of... <sighs> oh god. Energy. Do we have to smooch him? I'll be fine. Well, we, at least we either smooch him or we touch his hand. He was out of energy? I guess he didn't take enough when we first met, so it was just enough to heal his wounds. Oh. None of us took <clears throat> more than we needed to heal. From the sound of his voice, he was fighting back major pain. I felt incredibly bad. Damien smiled very lightly at me. I'll be fine. Give him your energy.